Hello, my name is Susan Mingle. I'm the clinical nurse educator for MedOne Group, and I'm here today to do a demonstration on the ICU Medical MedFusion Syringe Pump Model 4000. So now we're going to talk about some of the features of the syringe pump. This area here is your screen. Up top are what's called tubing holders. This is where your extension set tubing is threaded to prevent any kinks in the line. This is the carrying handle. You lift it up to carry it. And I'm gonna just open this up a little bit so you can see some of the other working parts of when we load the syringe. This right here is called the syringe barrel clamp. This is what will hold the syringe in place securely. And just to the side of that, this is called the syringe flange clip. And this is where the edges of the syringe will fit down inside there. Inside here are what's called the syringe holders. This is what's gonna to attach to the top of the syringe. And it holds the plunger in place. This is the syringe pump driver. This, this helps push the medication to the patient. And then lastly, on the end here, these grippers are what's called the syringe plunger release. This opens and closes to load and unload the syringes. Right here is your keypad and your decimal right there. Now, if we flip the device around and show you the back, this is where your power cord attaches. This is your ethernet port. This is for any transfer of drug libraries or data. And then this is what's called the optional pull clamp mount. This is an option that you can have. And then just basically the base of the syringe pump. Now we're gonna look at things what are called keys. At the top up here on the left, you have what's called alarm silence. Then you have your power key. And then you have your soft keys. And these will correspond with a prompt once the device is turned on. You have your back key. This is if you need to revert back to a previous step. And then again, your numbers and your decimal are here. Up at the top in red is your stop key, your start key in green, which obviously starts your delivery. Then you have what's called a prime and bolus key. So you'll use that button to prime and you'll also use that to do any boluses that are ordered. Next, we're gonna talk about what's called indicators. This first indicator here is an alarm indicator. That's either yellow or red. And the alarms are low, medium, and high priority. Low and medium would be yellow, high priority would be red. Just below that, and you see it's lit up, that just means that our pump is connected to a power source and it would be off if it was unplugged. The next indicator is for the battery. It blinks green on and off when it's on its own internal battery, basically unplugged, and it remains on once you plug it in and it's charging. Since it's off and it's fully charged, the light's not on right now. And then the under, other indicator up top here is the lock, so you can lock the panel out. Next to the indicator that looks like a syringe is the wireless indicator. If it's off, it means you're not connected to the wireless network. If it's on and you are connected to your wireless network, it will be blue. And then the last one is, looks like a syringe. When it's infusing, you get three green lights that will blink right to left when infusing. The MedFusion 4000 is a smart syringe pump, just like most pumps on the market today with hard and soft limits so that if you make a mistake, you can say no, or if you need to override, you can say yes. And it also has the hard limits where you can't give that dose, you have to go back and reprogram. It is a customizable library. It's called FarmGuard software that you can customize and build to your hospital's formulary. It has 16 profiles, such as pediatrics, ICU. It has eight categories, and the categories are basically speed keys or shortcut keys that get you to sections of the alphabet much quicker to save time in programming. It also has drug alerts, which are like a post-it note to the nurse for a specific uh, protocol to be followed 
such as 2RN checks, use a filter, et cetera. The flow rate ranges are 0 0.01 mils up to 1130 mils per hour. The uses are IV, intrathecal, arterial, epidural, sub-Q, and also enteral, and it can just be an enteral device. It would just have a different face place to, face plate to differentiate it. The pump weighs just a little less than four pounds. The battery fully charged, running at about five mils an hour, lasts seven hours, and it takes about 10 hours to fully charge it. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the syringes, the tubing, and then go into some programming. So now let's talk about the syringe sizes that are approved for the Medfusion 4000. This will accept anywhere from a one up to, up to a 60 ml syringe. Multiple manufacturers like BD, Terumo, Monoject, and Bibron. You can use any extension tubing. You would just lure lock it to the end of your syringe and then not prime it yet. We are um, recommending that you prime on the device. It just helps all the physics that go into the motor getting cranked up and started, reducing any mechanical slack that may happen, especially for low flow rates. So now we're gonna program an intermittent infusion. So first of all, I'm going to push my uh, power on button and it goes through some diagnostics. And this is an alert that you might see from time to time, and it just happens to be on this device that I'm using, and it's saying that maintenance is recommended. So you simply come up and press the silence button. You're still able to program the device. It's just after you use it, I would recommend tagging it and sending it on down to Biomed. So once it's finished with its um, power up sequences, now we're at our uh, care areas or our profiles. And I'm gonna be using the number two, the neonatal one or less kilos, and I'll choose number two. And then I'll press my drug. I'm looking for ampicillin. So A through B, remember these categories are right here so we can get to the alphabet quickly. So I'll hit one. Then I'm gonna page down or next to get to my ampicillin, and one more, and there we are, number four. I'm using 60 milligrams per mil. Yes, that's what I want. And now I'm gonna load my syringe by releasing all the barrel clamps. Let me lift it up, position it in, and then squeeze the flange here and then load it into my tubing clamp so it reduces any kinking in our line. I'm gonna choose BD, because that's what I have. I have a BD three. Gives me a one or a three choice. Make sure I hit the three. And then I'm gonna confirm that's what I have. My patient weighs one kilo. And we're going to do 30 milligrams. And I'm gonna press enter. And I'm gonna give this over Instead of 15 minutes, I'm gonna give it over 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna press enter. And I'm confirming that these are my settings by pressing yes. Then I, before I press um, anything else now, I've got to press my prime and bolus key we talked about earlier. So you'll press and hold that down until you see fluid come to the end of your tubing or whatever the priming volume on the set that you're using once it reaches that. When you see that, let go, and then go back to press the exit button. Now we're ready to connect it to our baby and press the green button to start. And you'll see our... So here's an example of an alarm that says the syringe is near empty. This could happen. You may just wanna make sure that you have all your uh, syringe loading all properly and in place. So just double check that. And then I will just try to press the green button to start it again. So now I've manipulated the numbers so that I can show you what happens when the entire ampicillin infusion has completed. So I'm just waiting for about 45 more seconds to count down so you can see what happens when we reach the end of our ampicillin infusion.
So you get the alarm, which is a high priority because it's blinking red. So you go, go over here and press your silence key. And now you automatically go to what's called a begin flush setup. The flush setup is only available for intermittence or volume over time infusions. So I'm going to say yes, then I wanna begin my flush setup. And this is assuming that I've um, replaced my syringe with a flush syringe. So I do have another 3 ml syringe placed in here and I'm going to say yes, begin my flush setup. I do still have to confirm what type of syringe it is. And I'm only going to do the priming volume of what's in my tubing so that I can ensure what's remaining in the tubing of antibiotic, the entire dose gets to my patient. So the priming volume of my particular set was 0.7 and I'm just gonna let it continue at the same rate that it was running. Then I'll just press confirm and I'll press start. Okay, I already have my next syringe loaded for our continuous infusion. We're going to be using dopamine and I'm using a one ml syringe. So we'll go back into the same profile, number two for one or less kilos. Then we'll be choosing number two for the drug C through D for dopamine. I'll press the next so I can toggle to the Ds. And you, you'll see there's tall man lettering for those sound alike and look alike drugs. And I'll be using the first one, the critical care dopamine. And I will say, yes, that's what I want. And again, confirming that my syringe is BD and I'm using a one and we'll confirm that. The patient weighs one, press enter, and we'll start with a dose of one, press enter, confirm the settings, yes. And then again, here's your prime feature. We're gonna press and hold the prime button until we see our fluid come to the end of our set. And then we will let go once our prime is complete and we see fluid. Then you'll press exit. And then now we're gonna go up to our green start key and press it. And then we should see our syringe light up right to left, indicating we're infusing. So you have the name of your drug. We're in the neonatal profile. You see the concentration, our total volume delivered, our dose, which calculates a rate Okay, so to the far right of the device, you will see a graph over here. It's called the Flow Sentry Pressure Monitoring. It's for rapid occlusion detection. And the pump will automatically monitor the occlusion during any infusion. And it's in uh, PSI. So very low is at the bottom, which represents four. Very high would be 50 PSI. And you'll notice that it says VH, which is very high. And the reason it is, is because it is a fixed setting anytime you use 1ml syringes, which just helps cut down on um, occlusion nuisance alarms. So it's not editable, it's fixed. Any syringe size is larger than that, you have the capability using the options button to go ahead and change it from very high to high to normal to low or to very low. Once the infusion is getting near completion, you will also see an alarm, a red alarm, syringe near empty. And this is also um, configured in the FarmGuard software um, in mills remaining, configurable based on the syringe size and the drug. It will be red and you'll just need to silence it and it will continue to infuse so that you have time to go get your next subsequent syringe. So let's look at a few of these soft keys and the prompts above them. So let's say we wanted to change this dose. You would just highlight that. And let's just say we wanna bump it up to two and then just press enter. And this is still running while we're making that dose change so you're not interrupting any, any flow. Then you can lock out your panel if you would like. This green light 
and the icon right there indicates it's locked and you won't be able to, to do anything else. It just reminds you the pump is locked. So to unlock it, you just press the unlock. And then let's say it's the end of your shift and you wanna clear the total volume delivered. You would just press clear total volume delivered, but you would make sure you need to write your amount down first. And then it does ask you, are you sure you wanna clear that yes or no? So if you do want to press yes, if not, I'll just say no, we'll go back. Okay, so this concludes our continuous infusion example. So now I'm gonna demonstrate what you would do if the drug that you're being ordered to give is not in the library or the flush feature is not enabled in the software in the device and you needed to program a flush. So I've already loaded a syringe and attached my tubing. What we're gonna choose for this profile is number eight, fluids and channel label. Because again, this drug that we're infusing is not in our library. So I'm gonna do a drug based on a volume over time. So I'm gonna choose number three. And again, this is just for demonstration purposes. If you don't have this in the library, yes. You have to confirm your brand of syringe again. And the size is 20. So I do have 20 mLs, and I'm gonna give that over 30 minutes, just for demonstration purposes. Confirm my settings, and then I'm going to hold my prime button down until I see drops at the end of my tubing. Then I'm going to exit, exit, <laughs> and then press the green button to start. And as I was saying, the screen is a little bit different from the other intermittent and continuous of dopamine because there is no name. The only thing we have in here is our syringe size, the time, the time remaining, our total volume delivered is the same, and then our 40 mLs per hour. So that's just an example of what you would do if you needed to program something that's not in the library or again, program a flush, an amount over time. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how you turn the device off. Let's just assume that the device has gone to syringe empty and we're ready just to turn it, shut it down. So you press and hold the power button and it says press power again to shut down and then you simply just let go and the device powers off. There are some additional features that can be customized into the FarmGuard software. They are not available on this device that I use for demonstration purposes. One of them is a quick library. It's basically like an anesthesia library specific to their drugs. There's KVO option, there is a standby option, there's a delay option, and a periodic callback option. This concludes our demonstration on the MedFusion 4000 syringe pump. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to www.med1group.com. Thank you so much for watching.